<laughs> I, uh, well, I, um, uh, I, I, I think, well, uh, in fact, uh, no, I think it's a legitimate question. I think, uh, uh, so how do you write an ERC grant? And I think the most important thing is uh, you do something really original. Uh, to me, it was very clear that I wouldn't be able to get a second ERC unless I propose something new. If I, um, if I say, okay, I want to go into details and uh, do more of what I have done before, before this would have been a killer. And uh, so I really thought, okay, let's now something, try something really bold, something where nobody has ever gone before, high risk, high value. And of course, high risk means that, uh, that you may fail. And um, uh, uh, this, I think, is very important. You have to have a high risk uh, uh, project, but at the same time, you have to um, devise a plan B. So what do you do if the experiment fails? And, uh, and if plan B fails, uh, uh, you have to have a plan C. And uh, so you have a whole cascade of fallback possibilities in order to make sure, on the one hand, that you try to reach for the moon, but uh, if you can't get to the moon with your rocket, uh, then you have to uh, th then you have to build a staircase to go there. But uh, so that was, that was the strategy, that we would uh, um, list a number of alternative approaches, uh, but, the, project, but the, idea, the principal idea was very, very ambitious. It was really to do something that would have a major impact. Well, the EU grants office is very important. They alert us of uh, any new calls that the EU is making. They give us uh, the um, administrative support. Uh, this is uh, something that for me is crucial because um, uh, mulling over administrative forms uh, is uh, for me as much fun as going to prison. And uh, so it's, uh, if somebody can do it uh, on my behalf, uh, that is uh, something that is totally wonderful. And uh, it costs money because uh, the these are very good people, very well qualified people, so I'm really grateful to the university that they provide this kind of service so that I can concentrate on what I can do best and I don't have to worry about the things that I can do worst. <laughs> So my experience uh, with the uh, European Union project uh, has been that uh, we have all gone through a learning process, um, uh, both the scientists and the European Union. I think uh, in the early days, uh, uh, the, let's face it, it was a catastrophe. But then things improved uh, over time. And uh, I, uh, uh, through framework 5, framework 6, framework 7, clearly there was uh, a huge um, improvement uh, in the way things were handled from the EU. There was also, however, a good improvement also from the scientists in, how, in understanding how to work with this. And uh, so, and um, at the moment, I have to say uh, that uh, the EU funding process, in my opinion, beats that of the NIH. Uh, to some extent, uh, I would criticize that the European Union is putting too much uh, emphasis on uh, um, applicative research uh, and uh, that sometimes um, uh, if you look at uh, how really big problems were uh, solved, uh, it was often through serendipity. So I think it's a fallacy to believe uh, that all science uh, can be resolved uh, through an engineering approach. Well, I think the answer is very clear. The uh, science uh, nowadays uh, e is a global enterprise, uh, and in fact, science was always a global enterprise. Uh, scientists have discovered globalization a hundred years before uh, business discovered globalization. Uh, the, already in the 19th century, uh, Robert Koch who was traveling to Japan and, uh, and uh, uh, getting contacts to scientists there. So I think that uh, uh, this is crucial because uh, the, the thing with, uh, with research is that uh, you have a problem and you try to attack it from one viewpoint which is biased by your own experience, by your own knowledge, which is limited. So, so you can't, maybe you, you will fail. Now somebody else comes and he attacks the same problem from a different viewpoint that is again a function of his cultural background and education and whatever. So you need diversity. If you don't have that, you won't be able to, uh, to do good science. You will always end up in stumbling blocks. So um, uh, the best way to achieve diversity is to be international.
If Switzerland does not resolve uh, its uh, current problems with the European Union, uh, um, Switzerland will, lo will lose big time uh, on uh, business, uh, on uh, welfare and on science. Uh, if you look at the past 150 years, uh, Switzerland has always recruited the, the best scientists worldwide and many of them went on to be become Nobel Prize winners or to found uh, very successful industries. Uh, so a big part of our welfare and of our, uh, of, of our riches in Switzerland depends on this. Uh, so the, um, the current political uh, uh, climate of encapsulating Switzerland uh, uh, of blocking access to the European Union is incredibly myopic and, um, and has really a chance to destroy what makes us a really advanced society. At the moment, Switzerland is number one worldwide for scientific productivity, for number of Nobel Prize winners uh, related to the population, uh, for patents, uh, for patent applications, we are top. Once we are no longer top, and this is going to happen, then the risk is that there will be a spiral of, uh, of, um, of decline, and that is then very, very difficult to revert.